Hello, I'm David Newpar, and I'd like to welcome you to an evening with the president of Millersville University. Hello, welcome to MU Minutes. I'm Janine Warfel. And I'm Corey Clayton. Hello, and welcome to WCMU News. MU TV is an operation in constant evolution. Hello, and welcome to News 99. I'm Andrea Sabia, alongside Hannah Spreadbury. And now for our top story. Good evening, I'm Rob Cullen. And I'm Kat Garrett. Welcome to News 99. So it's really driven by what students get excited about and what they're passionate about. Good evening, I'm Steph Lair. And I'm Chuck McDade. Thank you for joining us this evening. And now on to our top Millersville story. Hello and welcome to News 99 Thursday. I'm Bobby Becker. And I'm Tim Harris. And today is National High Five Day. It's not only about what students learn, but it's about what they offer to the students on the campus. And that's a valuable contribution. MUTV got its start from two students who came to me my second year at Millersville and said, we want to produce a television show. And so for about five years, they produced a, a magazine program weekly called Villeview. Hi, I'm Julianne Whitmire and I'll be your host this week on Villeview. Villeview is a weekly magazine produced by students right here on the campus of Millersville University. Each week on the show will feature staff members and students, a spotlight on Millersville sports, and a variety of interviews and special events. But we don't get bigger, but we always get better. Welcome to Villeview, I'm Claire Johnston. And this That's about how I spoke to Jay Leno when I first got here. These are Dottie's cookies. Like <laughs> we tried to put that show on campus in addition to that and that transition from going from off-campus cable to on-campus cable was the creation of a television entity that is currently called MUTV. We became a major outlet for news and events happening on campus here. Hello and welcome to WCMU News. I'm Teresa Saad. And I'm Eric Reagan. And our top story. If it was not on MUTV, it didn't happen on campus. Yeah, when I first came here, uh, the studios, radio and TV were both upstairs in what's was now high, so it used to be Myers Hall. It was in that, on the side of the corridor where the restrooms are now, and um, where the faculty offices are. And that whole side of the building was the, there was a, a, a television studio on one side and then in a smaller room there were some uh, editing. There's an AB roll system, an editing room. And when I came here and I saw the equipment, I thought, well, this is okay for a while, but we've got to change this pretty quick. And after two years, I remember writing the Dean a memo going, we can either spend a lot of money and get new equipment or we can spend a lot of money and buy a time machine so our students can travel back to the 70s when this equipment was really kind of exciting and new and they can get jobs in like 1975 or something. Because literally it was the same console I had when I was an undergrad in 1979 at Clarion was what we had here. And I was, you know, and that, that persuaded more money to come our way, at least helped. Um, and the, the TV studio was quite interesting on the second floor of uh, Hayesh, right across the hallway from the radio labs, this TV studio, which, you know, was maybe 12 feet tall and the lights, you could reach up and touch the lights and adjust them from a very short ladder, as I recall. Uh, and um, it was a very small space, but it was, a, it was kind of neat. Um, and I, I kind of liked those spaces in some ways. During the transition from leaving this building to building a studio, uh, the studio that we're currently in. Our studio facilities were located in the basement of Gage Hall. They moved the game room out of Gage and we had the TV studio in Gage Hall in what used to be the game room. The Dean of Student offered us the facility in Gage Hall. Otherwise, we were going to be in Columbia and we had already set up our mind, made up our mind that there won't be MUTV as we knew it until we came back into this building again. 
So then we moved our entire studio into Gage Hall. Filmed at Gage Hall from Millersville University, it's The Sideshow with Stephen Furry. And Tony Marsala and the Sideshow Writers. And now here he is, Stephen Furry. Hi, welcome to the Sideshow. I'm your host, Stephen Furry. They literally had, you know, kind of felt, this kind of felt egg crate, egg crate looking um, uh, kind of divider. So you were literally, the TV, the TV control room and the studio were in the same space. They're just divided by these kind of these little foam dividers. And it didn't matter what equipment we had, if you were really dedicated and you spent the time, it didn't matter if you were in the game room, game room of Gage or in the basement of the ROTC building, um, they learned and it was a great experience. I, I, again, you can get romantic about those things and this is a much better space we're in now, but um, it, it depended on your kind of desire, your will to kind of spend time outside of the classroom and to, uh, you know, to make the best use of what we had, and students did that. So I really appreciated that two or three years, I think it was two years of time where we were nomads kind of teaching all over the university. The change in technology was just fast. Um, and so we were trying to get ahead of that and in the process discovered that it was much more expensive to try to retrofit either this building or the Basler Wing into the kinds of studios that really we thought needed, we needed um, to give students appropriate learning experiences. And so we convinced the administration that instead of trying to retrofit the building, we should just build a new studio space with adequate ceiling height and adequate air handling and adequate sound uh, control because this building had these huge windows and was very difficult, difficult to soundproof. And so there were a variety of challenges with the renovation. When we started buying equipment, a, a bequest was made to the university by um, Claire McCullough of $200,000. And the university immediately matched that. And so we had $400,000 to do the renovation. It wasn't enough money to build a studio. There was this discussion about moving communication to Stayer. And somewhere along the way, as the planning came on board, there was a decision made to move the School of Education to Stayer instead. The department chair and I at the time opened up our morning newspapers one day and discovered that the School of Education was moving to that building. And that's how we found out we were not going there. So that's how we ended up in the middle of campus. Uh, then when the renovation information started happening, we needed this building, which is Bassler Hall, which was occupied by the English department because it was um, physically more flexible. We were able to tear down walls between classrooms and offices and put all of our facilities here. We drew up several alternatives, including building the television studio out in, on the other side of this building. Uh, and the idea was to put the control room on the second floor of Hash and look out over the studio. Well, there's a transformer in the middle of that courtyard out there, and it would cost $50,000 to move the transformer. And it was, if we were going to spend $50,000 on this renovation, we didn't want to waste it running, moving wires. So Dr. Sigworth came up with our current design, which was just to say, if we can't put it out that way, let's put it out this way. So our current television studio occupies, which something that was a parking lot. And the parking lot that's there has, I don't know, three or four spaces. It used to have 15 or 16 spaces all along this building. Um, and, and so our studio is an addition to the original building. Wow, I remember we spent a lot of time designing rooms and, and literally and it, it's to our benefit and to our fault, I think. It, all the faculty, it was all hands on deck. Because we wanted to have 
space for um, students to do projects as well as space for classes and we wanted to have enough flexibility so that we wouldn't have to limit what students were going to be able to do. When we first got into the these studios and facilities. It was pretty exciting. I remember students who were graduating, I think in that spring semester, it must have been spring of 2000, who we opened it up for the day of graduation. I think we had this space open and we were able to show students um, what we had and they were so bummed out, to put it the least, to say the least. Um, like all university projects, uh, the university sought donations, the, the uh, likely donor would be WGAL, uh, and they came through for us. Um, and there are several. Uh, Charles and Mary Hash gave the university a million dollars, and that's why it's the Hash Building. There were several. You know, Claire McCullough started us off in this uh, venue, um, in this adventure, and his name is on the whole complex. So we have Baxter Hall, we have Hash Building, and we have the Claire McCullough Communications Complex. When this facility was open, when we came in here, it was wild. And there was no school within this region that had the facility we had. We had the most up-to-date technology and we had a two studios, television studios functioning. A beehive of activities here in the evening. It was a different thing. I think we kind of knew in the back of our minds that with two TV studios we'd eventually cannibalize parts and, and you know, there's this kind of ideal vision of having this kind of fully functional second studio and then this teaching studio and they could be kind of, that would work on its own and this place would be its own kind of teaching space and it, I think it worked for maybe a year, year and a half before we started realizing the wear and tear was not going to allow us to have two TV studios without a great deal of money from higher ups all the time. When we were designing our studios, the only other sister institution that had studios was Kutztown. There was some production being taught at IUP, and um, there was a more of a speech communication oriented program at Westchester. And Bloomsburg had a program, but didn't have the same kind of facilities that we were planning. We tried several different times and several different methods to figure out how to get our programming on the air and keep it there. For a while we were running a VCR and we ran two hours of programming and when it ran it hit rewind and if you were watching television at that point you watched six minutes of static while the program tape rewound to the beginning and then those four half hour shows started over again. Um, we purchased an early system and actually owned it for almost two years that would run multiple VCRs. It didn't work. We gave it back to them. They gave us our money back. We got another system that ran, that set up um, infrared signals and allowed us to program, run this VCR for this amount of time, then run this one, rewind that, the other one, 
And so we finally had a system where we wouldn't have to look at rewind on the air. We're on one of those downhill slops again, I think, technology-wise. Though I think we're on their way back out. But I think for four or five years, things have gradually clearly been falling off. Uh, and that's too bad, but it happens. And again, there's no reason why, even despite that, I, I can already see the students who are going to be graduating in the next year or so who are going to go on and do quite well. All universities go through periods where their equipment is brand new and their equipment is in need of repair and replacement. We're on our way back up. We're in the process of changing over to digital technologies. I think that's going to be terrific for the students. It really is the standard in the industry and we're headed to that place. I just can't imagine having a broadcast program without a television station. And since South Central Pennsylvania and Pennsylvania in general is such an important state in the United States and, and it's such a great centrally located place, it's the perfect place to invest in a high quality broadcast program for students to come to. So I'm looking forward to seeing some, some upgrades soon. So the technology, I think it's sometimes a mistake to think that uh, technology somehow is what puts you on the map. I mean, it's nice to show people, it's great to have, and, and I would love to have the latest of everything. And we need to make that case over and over again to administration. Um, but I also think it's what students make of it, which is what's great about MUTV, and it's what's great about teachers who care about how they teach the classes and what students learn in the classes and make sure that they provide the opportunity and the, at least the foundation for students to kind of build on that and take it wherever they want to take it. I think it is the unique opportunity to get access to equipment early in one's academic career. And I think it's a real major point, a marketing point for our department, because you can come here as a freshman and get your hands on exceptional equipment, work with students who are doing this and have been doing it for two, three, four or more years. So you get a chance, you get access. And I think that's a huge opportunity. I think students that work for MUTV have a much better understanding of a television station and a media environment in general than students that just go through the coursework. Certainly the professors try, but really in this industry you have to make the extra effort. So I think students that work with MUTV make the extra effort. They've practiced things much more, they've written more, they've shot more. They just get a better sense of things and sometimes they've had earlier internship experiences because they've met people in the industry through working with MUTV. So I really think is a huge benefit and I can't imagine not having that background and experience on your resume when you graduate from Millersville. MUTV has this studio most nights to themselves. That's a, that was something I negotiated early. I'm very proud of, uh, but I've seen it pay the dividends. I think the real future of MUTV is actually in digital television, is converging the things that students do here at the television stations and actually putting them up on the web. I think the more the stuff that is actually created by the station also goes up on the web, the better off it's going to be. Because right now commuters can't see anything that's going on. They would be able to do it if they could go to the website and they could see things. So I would actually push, in fact, I would push students to go past that and I would push students to do a new newscast and put it on the web and then show the packages in the evening or in the morning. So I think the two really need to work more, integrate that more. And I think the main reason for that is because in the job market, people are looking for you to be able to shoot it, bring it back, digitize it, edit together, put it up on the web, do a little story for that, and show it on the news that night. I think that's a great way to go. And I think that's what the industry is looking for. And I think MUTV is on its way to that place. I think that we will always see some cycles up and down um, in terms of level and commitment. I think it's harder for students recently to compete with the kind of pressures that they feel to earn money and to kind of develop themselves professionally and so I think there are some challenges that our current students have in terms of how to allocate their time to kind of paid employment versus kind of honing their professional skills and, and I'm sorry about that I wish I wish that were different. I can only wish and you uh, television to grow and be one of the best organizations on Miller Street University campus and by implication to be the best program, a student program in the whole of the uh, United States of America. So that we said, look, go to Miller Street, see their student television see the maturity there.
this, these are my babies. I don't want, it's like, you, you know what, how your parents hold you there. They want you to grow and become somebody. I don't want cable, uh, uh, MU television, to be just a few members. I don't want it to die when I'm alive. I want it to grow and grow and grow. The sky should be the limit. 